What is up guys, Ivan here with GetIvan.com. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a neat little trick inside one of my uh, scraping servers for being able to use footprints, URLs that we get from custom footprints through the page scanner and then matching those against, say, an original URL sample in order to find URLs from a sample that meet a certain criteria. So I'm not really sure a way of, a short way of putting that, but in this example for a repeat customer, what, what we're doing here is we're looking for pulsed electromagnetic field uh, therapy types of uh, keywords or an acronym on this uh, URL sample. And the goal is to look on page to make sure that these um, these web pages contain that acronym. So we want to make sure that these samples from this uh, other data set actually discuss the sub niche, which is PEMP therapy or pulse electromagnetic field therapy. And so this is like a holistic niche, basically, because this uh, this particular customer got his uh, sample from uh, some sort of uh, Google Maps collection job or some some other sort of directory uh, collection. But it turns out that, you know, as he was looking through the data, apparently some of those URLs didn't actually discuss PEMPF. And so that's when he turned to me to really just handle the data to then go in and look for that footprint. And this, this technique I'm going to show you is really cool because it allows you to take it allows you to have a, another data set and to sort of like pluck out very targeted data from your data set. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go to your add-ons here and you need to open up the page scanner, which we have here. You load up your URLs inside the page scanner. And let me open another instance because this one is hung up on some threads. I wanna see if I, I wanna see if it'll finish. Whoa, those nine threads that it's uh, getting hung up on. So let me open up. Uh, I don't have too many resources monopolized, so I'm going to go ahead and open up another page scanner uh, add-on. You can have a bunch of add-ons open as long as it's not too heavy on your... If you get above 80 CPU usage, you got to be careful because then you can be at risk of your computer crashing. So with the page scanner open, let's say we loaded our URLs from Scrapebox, then we open up this... Uh, platform mask, you can add other masks if you want, but you can just edit your, your typical mask and then create a custom uh, little footprint for whatever you're trying to get. Now, line if you want some examples of how this works, you can look at some of the other ones included with Scrapebox, like the WordPress um, footprint. In this case, it's I'm pretty sure it's line by line if what this is doing is it's saying if this line is found then bam put the wordpress uh footprint as being found for that asset if this is found or this is found or this is found or this is found it's like if this or this or this or this or this etc then label it with this footprint wordpress and you can run multiple footprints at the same time so with one footprint you can be like if wordpress is found label it as wordpress if blogengine.net is found label it as blog engine so you can run multiples at the same time with the page scanner a lot of the times i'll just do like a custom footprint and then i'll just like update it overwrite it multiple times and it just labels it as custom so in this case if pemp is found and i could also put pulsed electro for example if i wanted to do that because it could it could be that somebody did might have you know that on the page, but then wouldn't have pimp on the page. But it's probably not likely. I don't know. I went ahead and did this anyways as just pimp because that's a really unique phrase. Whenever you're doing your phrases, you want to make sure that they're unique. You know, you you don't want to do something so broad that it's just gonna like if you did the word the, it wouldn't tell you anything. You know, obviously. But if you did the roofer, then that would be sort of almost too specific. So you might want to just say roofer or roof or roofing 
you might want to go roofing roofer roofer you might want to go roofing companies you kind of see what i'm saying like you don't want to be want to be too broad you got to find the goldilocks zone so anyways you you create your footprint for whatever you're you're trying to find in your url sample check off that you know uncheck all the other ones check off that one that you're looking for and you can you want to make sure that that's updated and then you close that and under settings you can just do default settings 200 connections this depends on your 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 proxies of course uh, here i leave it default hoping that it'll run faster in other parts of script box i run 15 second connect timeout and 30 second read timeout in, in some cases and then i do stit pages bigger than three megabytes but uh you, you, it's up to you if you want in terms of whatever you want to do i just i want it to be fast and not really get hung up too long if possible anyways and then you just hit start and once it goes through the process then it'll look uh, like this and uh, oftentimes you have to crash this instance and then you can open up your scrape box folder go into add-ons and or not add-ons you want to go to add-on sessions go to page scanner and then you can just open up the text file so once you get that file then you can um you can open up the you need the premium plugin uh, email scraper premium and then you go to email filter and in the email filter what you want to do is load in the original url sample that you're trying to check against so i'll go ahead and save this into this just temporary file here so let me load this from my red server text file and then you keep emails containing and this is where you paste the emails that you have or the not the emails the urls where you've confirmed that footprint on that web page and in this case i'm actually going to do urls that both have because i'm not sure if the page scanner actually sees the metadata either that would be something good to test. Um, so I, well, actually, you know what? I think it downloads the entire HTML of that page. So if that's the case, it should see the metadata also. But in any case, I've also come into the original sample, done a grab check on the meta inf info, the metadata over here in my second instance. So I'm gonna export this as, uh, actually, yeah, you always want to do this as a CSV because it doesn't work properly with some of the other exports. And we'll do uh, just, uh, I'll call this pre-meta. As I usually call this pre-meta or post-meta. And then you come over here and you change this extension to dot text so that it can be read by, sorry about that, so that it can be read by uh, Scrapebox. And let me clear this second instance, load this in. And so now each line item has the, you know, the URL and the metadata. And so it's easy enough to just come in here and go remove URLs not containing temp. So it could be like none of them contain it. Oh yeah, a small number contain it. So then I would need to clean up the the rows so that there's only the 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 you know the urls so then i'll remove everything after quote comma to remove all the metadata and then i copy this over here and open up uh i'll just open up this text file you want to use the a regular text file to control h edit the data that's before and after the urls so we would want to do forward slash quote comma because a lot scrapebox doesn't have a feature and it really needs a feature to remove trailing slash unless i'm just ignorant of it see trim i don't think there's a feature to remove trailing slash if i'm wrong please please send me a comment or a message and tell me that there's a way to remove trailing slash drives me crazy that there's not a way to do this so i do this manually all the time in the text editor so i replace everything with the trailing slash and the quote comma and then everything that's quote comma and then everything that's just com or everything is just quote because there's quotes in the beginning and so that gives us a pretty uh clean list there we also want to copy that and oops 
and clean the sample. Looks like it didn't remove anything though. And I'm just gonna paste this in here like so. So this gives us a sample uh, met, uh, based on the metadata. I'm pretty sure the page scanner looks at the meta information though. Looks like this is frozen. So if it freezes, which this often happens, this really needs to be fixed, but you can just kill it at task manager, open up that folder and drop the auto save onto your desktop. So let's not get too confused and let's uh, drag this over here. And so what it'll show is a piping. And then if it has a footprint, it'll show it. If not, it won't show it. So we call that custom. So we're going to remove everything not containing piping custom. And you, you wouldn't even really need to do that. You could just do piping C technically. So then that just has everything that has the, the actual footprint of PEMP on that page. So obviously the page scanner got us a whole lot more PEMP than the metadata did. So that's obvious, obviously why that's valuable. Then we need to remove the, the custom footprint thing with the forward slashes, of course. So you can, you can sort of highlight them, then hit control H and it automatically puts it in there. Then replace all that. And then we'll, we'll, we'll remove the forward slash just to remove the custom. And now it's totally clean. So let me copy this and paste this in here, remove duplicates. And then I'm also going to drag this pre meta into this area and remove duplicates. Let's see 925. I wonder if it's the same 924. Let's see. Wow. So I guess, I guess the meta also got us one additional URL. So maybe the, maybe the page scanner doesn't see the metadata. That's interesting. Or maybe there's just one ab URL aberration in there or something like that. Who knows? It's pretty, it's close enough. Right? So anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete these and let's call this, uh, you know, I don't really, you don't really need to do this, but I'm just going to do this for the sake of it. Um, let's call this PEMF, uh, footprint URLs. Make sure that saves. Okay. And then back in the premium plugin, we can, I don't think we can drag here yet. This doesn't work. We need to load this box with our PEMP footprint URLs. So I guess, I guess we do need to say, well, you can, oftentimes I'll just copy, just copy paste it. Sorry about that. So uh, we don't have a huge sample here. It's 5,800. And so it's going to, but it's going to look for each of those URLs, you know, obviously. And so if it's a really big sample, like it can sometimes, this pro plugin can sometimes freeze, but this shouldn't take long. So once those are loaded, we want to keep emails containing these. We want to keep the line items containing these URLs, obviously. And one of the problems is we cleaned the forward slashes from the this sample. So you, you got to make sure you're being really careful about this because, well, you know what, there's a space here. Okay, still mine. Okay, um, we clean the forward slashes from these URLs. Oh, yeah, there's, there's a space down there. Watch out for for line breaks like that that are sneaky. And your original sample needs to have the forward slashes cleaned if you clean them, you know, along the way. So does this is this the original fifty eight hundred? Okay, let's go ahead and do that over here. So in order to do that without other pro oftentimes other processes can put things at the end of your string, which allow it, which make it easy to clean the forward slashes. If you just have regular s strings like this, though, then you have to artificially add something to the end, and then you can remove it. And you can do that with the tools under the scrape box text editor. You can just paste those URLs in here, and then you can go post fix with user input. And oftentimes I'll do like three exclamations. And then you copy this, close this. Sorry about that. I need to turn my speaker off. 
sorry about that. So then you can open up like a text file, paste those in with all those exclamations, and then just have it find all those forward slashes with exclamations, replace it with nothing, and then remove the forward slash it forward slash and just have it find exclamations in the cases where like here there is no forward slash. So uh, yeah, I know I know it's a bunch of switcheroo type mess, but it's it's necessary to make sure that they're the same because Scrapebox doesn't view URLs with no forward slash is the same as the, the exact same URLs with no forward slash. So, okay, red server, open this up, and then apply. So that should should not take too long, but you'll see oftentimes this plugin will go not responding. It's Fortunately, it's working in the background. So even if it does that for a while, just leave it alone and come back later. It looks like it already finished, though, fortunately. So we went from 5813, so 5800 URLs. Let's save this. And let's save this as Kempf. Um, footprint print URLs matched or something like that. And, uh, well, obviously, you know what? I'm a doofus. <laughs> obviously, it's just going to clean to the exact URLs, right? So I, I, was not, I was not thinking clearly, clearly there. What I need to do is I need to get the fully qualified spreadsheet that has those URLs in the columns. And then, and then it can clean out only those, those, those columns in that CSV that have those URLs. Sorry, I was, uh, there's so many steps, it's easy to get confused. Let me import this file real quick. Okay, so I have my file here. I saved it as a CSV. So should be here. And you can see in the file, there's just a ton of columns. So that, that's the purpose of this method is to be able to, to do very unique filtering uh, across, you know, a lot of columns and, and data. Uh, so let's go into PAM therapy folder. Let me grab this CSV and go back to the server and blow this up. So drop this in here. This needs to be text so that Scrapebox can see it. And for those who don't know, CSV stands for comma separated values. So as long as that's the case in the file, it that's that's what makes a, a file basically comma delimited. It's the values are separated by commas. It's not necessarily the format. The format is just something for Sun target program to be able to handle, but as long as there are commas in there, like I mean, it's it's still a CSV in text format. You know, you can put it in just about any format as long as the encoding isn't all that different. CSV in text, I think, encode in UTF-8 or something like that. So you can change things back and forth between CSV and text files. Is the point? Anyway, so here's the CSV file. I need to load this section with the CSV text file. And now we want to apply this. We want to look for those URLs amidst all that data and save each line item that contains one of those URLs. It probably take a little bit longer since there's a lot more columns to process, but it shouldn't take too much longer. Let's skip ahead to when it's finished. Oh, it just finished. So that's nice. Okay, so we went from 5,800-ish. Let's see what's in the text file. 6749. Okay, apparently there's some duplicate URLs in some of those listings, I guess from different locations from that directory listing. So then we would go save. And we're going to save that as 
10th URLs matched. And let's see how big this is. So 993. I guess it would be just as big because we took these URLs from the original sample. So it'd just be as big as that sample. I, the reason I'm talking about it in this capacity is that um, in some cases, you might use this sort of uh, inverted lookup, whatever you would want to call this, and you might look at an original sample and and uh, it it only comes up with uh, say parts of the the terms or the 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 qualifiers that you put in here. Like you don't have to just use this with URLs that you found from the original sample. Like you could use this for say a bulk of keywords. This is this is the only way to do key, bulk keyword filtering to my knowledge. Because otherwise, when you're over here, you have to go remove filter URLs containing or not containing. Um, and you, you could go URLs containing entries from, I suppose. So then you could create an independent list, like if you wanted to do it from this utility. But then, like, you can just post them into this, like, box. And you can do a lot more if this then that sort of instructions here, like, with this section. So anyways, like the, the, this is really kind of about using the page scanner in conjunction with the, the, the premium filter. You can, you can do some of that with some of these, you know, utilities, but this is really kind of the easier way to do it. You know what I mean? I haven't tested speed though. So that might be worth testing like which, if this, if this is significantly faster than this, that might be possible. So something to think about. But anyways, that is pretty much it. Now I have, you know, about a sixth of the original URLs contain these, these URLs contain a very unique footprint on page. So we have confirmed now that those listings are topical to the customer. They're topical to, you know, this sub niche of holistic uh, services, you know what I'm saying? So uh, just a really neat method for being able to use the page scanner and a special filtering, you know, method to be able to find exactly the right websites for, you know, some very particular niche. So that's pretty much it, guys. Appreciate you watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.